Hello. It's Mo Willems. Welcome to Lunch Doodles. If you remember yesterday, I asked you to get dressed up. Maybe in something silly or something fancy. I got dressed up in something that is both silly and fancy at the same time. Uh, maybe you didn't get dressed. That's okay. Or maybe now you kind of wish you had gotten dressed now that you see that I'm wearing my fancy glasses. So let's pause. Ready? Pause. And you can go out and get something to go get dressed in. It could be something silly. It could be a little thing. It could be a hat. It could be a big thing. It's okay. We're just here and I'll wait. Okay. You good? You got, you figured it out? Yeah, okay. Play. Hi, welcome back. Let me take a look at you. Let's see. Oh yeah. <laughs> wow. That's some pretty great stuff. Well done. Well, I hope you like my little outfit. I like mine. All right. Let's get started, shall we? Okay. Today is Tuesday, March 24. Fancy day, so I thought I'd write 24 in a fancy way. Well, why are we all dressed up today? Well, because it's fun. We've been inside for a while. We haven't had a lot of excuses to dress up. And I have a special book that I want to show you the process of and some of the work that I've done. And it's about dressing up. It's called Naked Mall Rat Gets Dressed. Would you guys like to see some of the originals and some of the drawings from Naked Mall Rat Gets Dressed? And then maybe we'll learn how to do some of the drawings. All right, so I'm going to be going all the way over there. As you remember, the original art from my books are in these drawers. So I'm going to go. See if I can find that. So if I go, since it's a pretty big walk, I'm going to put my hat back on. And it might get cold. I'll put my scarf back on. Button up, because whenever you're standing, you should have all of your buttons done. That's what I was told as a kid in New Orleans, and I'll have my walking cane. See this cane? Look at that. It has a duck on it. It's because there is a hotel in Memphis that has ducks, and I got to be the duck master. I got to get all the ducks to go from the lobby of the hotel up to their rooms in the penthouse, and then they gave me this duck stick. Ready, shall we? All right. Let's see now. Let's don't let the pigeon drive the bus. We already did that one. Yes, the pigeon has to go to school. The pigeon needs a bath. Leonardo the Terrible Monster. Oh! Naked Mole Rat gets dressed. Can you see that? All right. We're here, so I'll take off my hat. and take off my cane. And it's not as warm or cold as I thought. It was going to be all the way over here. Take my scarf back now. And let us open up this drawer. Wow. It's been a while since I've seen all of these. Now, Naked Mole Rat Gets Dressed was drawn and watercolored by hand. Look at that. That is the original cover that I did in 2007. Right? And so usually my art, 
I'll do the line drawings, if you remember, and then I'll scan those in and I'll color those in a computer. But this time, I decided to do absolutely everything on one layer. There's Wilbur putting on some paints. Wilbur likes to get dressed in all kinds of different ways, right? But not everybody else in the Naked Mole colony thinks that's a good idea. Matter of fact, they think that is a terrible idea. And so they get angry at him. Let's see. Ooh, that's good. Cool. They get angry at him. This again is in a frame. It must have been in a show or something. There he is first trying to get dressed, and these guys poke their heads in. See, I finished the painting there. They're not happy. I did a lot of tests first. Look, that's an early test to see if that ink style was how I wanted it to look, and I wanted Wilbur to look like that. And, oh, here. Here are all the scandalized mole rats running away. Run, 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 run. Like that. So, in the end, they discover that getting dressed isn't so bad. It doesn't hurt anyone, so there's no reason not to do it. And so, some of them decide to get dressed, and some of them don't, because it's just not their thing, right? But they all decide to get along. And then, years later, I made a musical out of it, and we turned it into an album. Naked Mole Rat Gets Dressed, The Rock Experience. We did all these little silly jokes. I just saw them real quick here. Oh, let me get on my knees here. Some of the original blues for that. Naked Mole Rats is different rockers. All right. There we go. I think you can guess this is rhinestone teeth. I think that's a funny joke. So then, oh, here is the chart of all the different steps of those 40 surfaces. Didn't, didn't go that bad, went pretty quickly. I didn't have that many revisions, although I ended up making a very big revision. So here's the original book. And naked mole rats all have this flesh tone that's the same. And then years later, we did an exhibit that's right now in Indianapolis and is touring the country and it had a naked mole rat get dressed game. And I realized that the kids playing this game didn't have all the same color on their skin. And I realized that even though naked mole rats do, the book is not about naked mole rats, it's a metaphor, which means it's, it's an ideas that aren't real that you can make to yourself. So then I redid it and I changed the colors of the characters so that they would more accurately reflect the colors of the people that I see on the street and the people that are my friends and that I have dinner with and that I call and that I work with. I wanted to make sure that as many different types of mole rats were represented. Oop, look at that. See that? That is the hidden pigeon. And the pigeon gets in every one of my books. All right, shall we go back? I have some cool things to tell you about this book. I'm kind of excited. All right, I'll put my scarf back on and a big walk now. And my hat, fancy, fancy hat. My fancy thing. Oh, ready? Let's go. That's pretty fancy. All right, I'll put my stock back there. And this. I am not the only fancy one who's here right now because you guys are dressed silly or fancy or however you're dressed. But my studio assistant decided also to get dressed like that. So let's let's see. Come all the way. Oh, that's a good point. There we go. So there he is. Vincent decided to wear his favorite bow tie. Uh, which he always wears at gala events. Looking pretty fancy, pretty gala eventy, Right? Thank you. Good boy. Well, I 
made this book many years ago, and it mattered to me a lot because something very special happened. When I was a kid, I used to love Peanuts. I love Charlie Brown and Snoopy. I love them so much. And I never got to meet Mr. Schultz. Sparky is what everybody called him. I never got to meet him. But when I was five years old, I wrote a letter to him. And it said, Dear Mr. Schultz, can I have your job when you're dead? And then I just waited because that's what I really wanted to do. I wanted to draw Charlie Brown and Snoopy. They mattered so much to me. Well, he spent a lot of time not dying, but then eventually I grew up and I started my career and I did my things. And I got to meet Sparky's widow, Jean. And one day I was at the studio and they were showing me all of the original drawings and a bunch of his comic strips and his drawing table and his studio, which for me was very, very exciting. And I was just getting started to, oh, my studio assistant is doing something. Hold on one second. I'm going to close the door because my studio assistant is just making a lot of noise. It's okay. So back to Charles Schultz. I was at the studio and Gene Schultz gave me one of his nibs. And it was right when I was about to draw this book, Make Him All Right Get Stressed. Now, what's a nib, you ask? Well, a nib is the metal piece that goes into an old-fashioned pen. This is an old-fashioned dip pen, and it doesn't have a nib. And here's my box of nibs. And Sparky Schultz's nib is somewhere in here. I should probably put it someplace a little bit more special. Um, let's see, is that it? No, that's the nib I usually use. And then that is, I think this is it. So what you do with a nib like that is you put it in this metal slot, and now you have a dip pen. And then, oh man, you get fancy paper and fancy ink. This is all very, very fancy. And this is how I used to draw for years and years and years and years and years and years. And then I started using different pens and markers and brush pens. Take this, you dip it in. Dip it in. There's not so much ink there. It's been a while. You see the ink? Oh, let's see if there's enough ink in there. Oh, there we go. And then you press it. And you get a line. Yep, yeah, this is Sparky's nib. And you know how I know it is? Because it is hard to draw with. Oh, man, when I first got this, I thought, oh, man. I love his line. I love the way he drew. I did not realize that this nib was so hard to draw with. But... It came at just the right time, hard, because it was when I was making this book. And I feel that Wilbur, the naked mole rat, looks a little bit like Snoopy, sort of a big off-balanced head. So that was a real thrill for me, the idea that I could draw a book with the same tool that my hero drew with. Wow, that was pretty incredible. Shall we learn how to draw? Wilbur to make a mole rat? Let's do it with not that nib. This line's going to be too small. Put another piece of paper here. All right. Wilbur is pretty simple. His head is a bathtub from the top. See, it's kind of like a rectangle, but it's curved around all four sides. See? And making a bathtub. And that is his head. Then we take my favorite number, number 11. Actually, you know, we had an extra digit. Number 111, even fancier. We go across and we have the teeth. We do two upside down letter U's, letter U, letter U, and then the line. That's, that's kind of like the 11 there. And then two dots for the nostrils, and then little dots for the eyes. And there you have it. It looks like Wilbur. Let me write my name, because then I'll know that I drew that later. Because Mo 
One of the things you may notice about this character that makes him super tricky is he has no mouth. So I had to figure out ways to make the characters have feelings without opening their mouths. And the way I did that was with body language or silhouette. And a silhouette is if you were to darken in all of the character, then you would have a sense of what they feel like or they look like in a silhouette. It's a silly word, but it's the name of the French guy who invented it a couple hundred years ago. So there we go. All right. Are you guys ready for question time? Let's do it. Let's do questions. Here we go. All right. Today, uh, March 24, who is your favorite author, asks Ray. Well, I think we've already talked about that. That was Charles Schultz. He was the author of a comic strip called Peanuts. How many books have you started and not published? Asked the Lawson family. All of the Lawsons asked me. That's a very good question. I have written many books that are not published, and some of them from before I ever was published, and some of them after. Some of them just didn't work. So I tell you what I'm going to do. I don't think I've told anyone about this book. Um, I'll let you see if you can play with this idea, because I couldn't make it work. The idea was called In Billy and the Invisible Invention Machine. And it was about a kid who had a machine that made invisible inventions. And the problem with a machine that makes invisible inventions is that all your illustrations at the end are just blank pages. But anyway, didn't work for me. I spent about a year or two on it. And maybe you can come up with something interesting for that. Um, Mr. Mo Willems, how old? <laughs> Very formal, good. Well, I am, as you know, dressed up, so that's good. How old were you when you read your first book? Hmm. Not exactly sure. I know that an early, early book that I read all by myself that I really liked was Sneetches on the Beaches. I thought that was a good book. Um, our favorite book, says Eliana, who's 10, our favorite book is Edwina the Dinosaur who didn't know she was extinct. Our question is, why did you name her Edwina? Because that's her name. That's why I named her Edwina. There's another character there in that book called Reginald Von Hoobie And the reason I named him Reginald Von Hoobie is I always have trouble naming things, right? The pigeon, his first name is The, right? Piggy is Piggy, Elephant is Elephant Gerald. But I don't really like naming characters. So sometimes in an early draft, I'll just write Hoobie because that means to me thing. I go, oh, hand me the Hoobie What's the Hoobie And in this case, with Reginald von Hooby Dooby, the Hooby Dooby stuck. It was a Hooby Dooby Dooby. All right, Emma and Jack, what was your favorite thing you worked on for Sesame Street? Well, for me, Emma and Jack, I loved making the cartoons. I loved writing. I was young. I started at Sesame Street. I was 24 years old, which to you sounds old, but it isn't. You're wrong. And um, I loved how much I learned there, because I wasn't by myself. I was with all these writers and puppeteers and friends with animators. And so every day it was like going to school at work. So that was my favorite thing, learning. Um, eight, Amanda asks, what kind of cookies does Pigeon like? All of them. Uh, number nine, Nicole is asking, are Elephant and Piggy in quarantine together? <laughs> what about the pigeon? Uh, yes. Yes, they are. And sometimes Elephant and Piggy are getting on each other's nerves because they're just, you know, it's a lot to be so close to an elephant and a pig. And sometimes the pigeon is getting on everybody's nerves, but they all love each other. And at the end of the day, they get together and they doodle and they feel better. And speaking of that, why don't we doodle? Let's see what our theme is going to be today. I know we're so fancy and silly. Make him all right, get stressed. Let's doodle some clothes. You doodle whatever type of clothes you want. I'm going to start with a, with a t shirt. 
expensive t-shirt. And maybe later I'll cut these out and I can make paper dolls out of them. What I thought we would talk about while we're doodling these is one of the things that makes drawings really fun is patterns. So let's doodle some clothes all with different types of patterns. Like this is a t-shirt that's polka dotted with one special dot. Yeah. That's fun. All right, let's do a pair of fancy bell bottoms, which are coming back. There's nothing I can do about that. I mean, there are a lot of things in this world you can't control, and bell bottoms being popular again is one of them. So let's do stripes. Oh, yeah, I like that. That's stripy pants. When I was a kid, I had to wear a lot of stripy pants. There was not much that you could do about it because those were the pants in the pants stores. Stripy pants. Um, let's see. I love, and used to really do this a lot, I love doodling fancy shoes. Andy Warhol used to do that. And look at this pattern. These are called wingtips. I don't know why, because you can't fly in them. But when I was in college, I pretty much only wore wingtips. And there's another way that I was different than other people around me. And my wingtips were always black. These are going to be purple. See all those little dots? Let's see, what else? Oh, we could make, um, we could make some underpants. That's a good pair of underpants. And they could be checkered, like my pants. See, it really doesn't matter what you draw, but look at how much more fun they get when you get patterns. And sometimes I like to just doodle patterns all by themselves because patterns are just really fun. All right, I'm going to sign it on this side because I know that today, and then I'm going to make my signature a pattern. Too. Look at that. Well, yeah, keep making that pattern. Here we go. Here are my pattern clothes. Well, thank you guys so much for coming around today and for getting dressed and fancy if you did. I really, really appreciate it. Um, I'm not going to be fancy tomorrow. I'm just going to be dressed normal, but I do have a fancy magic surprise for you, I hope. So, I hope you have a great day. Thank you guys for watching. Enjoy your doodling and be nice to each other. I'm gonna leave now. Put on my I'm thinking maybe tonight, who knows? Maybe I'll have a fancy dinner. I have a fancy dinner party because I'm already so fancy. All right, I'll see you guys.